All right, let's work another example having to do with one-to-one -one and onto. In this example, we're actually going to work with two functions. We're going to work with the function f, which is a function from a to b. And we're also going to work with the function g, which is a function from b to c. And we're going to prove a few different things. First of all, we're going to show that g composed of f being one-to-one -one implies that f is one-to-one. -one. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do to establish that. I'm going to choose an x and y in a with f of x equals f of y. And I'm just going to call that b. Okay. So just to simplify things, f of x is some number, f of y is some number. I'm saying these are equal, so they're both equal to the same number. And I'm going to call that b. And the reason I'm going to call it b is because f is a function from a to b. So f of x and f of y are both elements of b. So let's just call that number element b. What I need to show is I need to show that x equals y. So that's what the definition of a one-to-one -one function is. For all x, y, and a with f of x equals f of y implies that x equals y if f is a one-to-one -one function. So since I'm trying to establish that f is one-to-one, -one, what I'm really trying to show is that x equals y. So how can I do that? So let's do a little computation. We are told that g composed of f is one-to-one. -one, right? That's what we're told. So we're going to have to use that to get to the conclusion we want. So g composed of f of x, by definition, just means take the g function and evaluate it at the point f of x. Okay. Well, this f of x number is something we were calling b. So really what we're doing is we're computing g of b. And again, remember the function g goes from b to c. So g of b is really just some element of capital C. So again, I'm going to call this just c. So if you want, you can think of c as a number, but in general it's just little c, an element of the set, capital C. I can also compute gf of y, right? I'm just totally fine to do that. gf of y, by definition, means take the g function and evaluate it at the point f of y. But remember, we have in our choice above that f of x is f of y, so f of y is just b again, right? And g of b is this thing that we've decided to call c. So I've computed g composed of f of x and g composed of f of y. What I've shown is that g composed of f of x is c, and that's also equal to y. Right? I just did these computations up here to show that they were both equal to the same thing. Well, what do we know? We know that g composed of f is a one-to-one -one function. So for one-to-one -one functions, the only way that this can happen is when x equals y, because that's the definition of a one-to-one -one function, and we're told that g composed of f is one-to-one. -one. So we've just established that x equals y, which is what we needed to show to establish that f is one-to-one. -one. So at this point, we have done what we needed to do, and we've established that f is a one-to-one -one function. For all x, y, and a, f of x equals f of y implied that x equals y. That's what we just did. f is one-to-one. -one. All right, let's go ahead and do another little proof. Let's show that g composed of f being an onto function implies that g itself is an onto function. Okay, so we're in this one we're going to work with the definition of onto. Let's let c, little c, be an element of c. And we know since g of f is onto, that there must exist some a in a such that g of f of a is equal to c. So remember, g composed of f is actually a function that goes from a to c, right? because g composed of f is really g of f of x. So I start by putting in an element into my function f. So I have to start with an element of a. The output of the function f is an element in b. I take that element of b and I put it into the function g. And then the output of the function g is an element in c. So since g of f is onto, we know that there has to be some a in the set a to get us to the point c in c. That's just the definition of an onto function. In other notation, what does this mean? That means when I evaluate g of f of a, I get out c. Remember that f of a is some element of b. So let's just define b is equal to f of a. So f of a is just some element in the set b, because that's how the function f is defined. So instead of calling it f of a, we can just call it the element b. Okay. So for all c and c, there exists a b and b, such that g of b is equal to c. So why is this true? Well, we'll think about what we just did. We just chose an arbitrary element in c. 
Because g of f is onto, we know that there is an a and a. So given a c and c, we can always find an a and a. Given an a and a, I can always plug that a into my function f to get this b value. Okay? So there existing an a and a means, really, that there exists a b and b, because I can always just construct it easily. Okay? So for all c and c, we've shown that there's a b and b such that this is true. And specifically, b is equal to f of a. This right here, this thing that we've written out, that is just the definition of an onto function, right? That's exactly what that is. So we've established that g itself is an onto function. And that's what we were trying to show.